Hey guys, I'm Alvin, and welcome to another One More Week to Go trip report. Today I'll be narrating one of Peterson's recent flights with Air Canada from Hong Kong to Vancouver. The journey starts at the Airport Express station in Kowloon, where passengers of the Airport Express train can do an early check in and bag drop before even heading to the airport. The train runs quite frequently and takes about 30 minutes to get to Hong Kong Airport, which is the fastest method from the city centre. Since I got my boarding pass before boarding the train, I headed straight to security once I got to the airport. I had about 6 hours to kill since my flight was leaving later in the evening. After some duty free shopping, I decided to take the automated people mover to the far end of the concourse to check out the United Club Lounge, which was near gate 40. The United Club is located one floor above the departure level and is located near the Plaza Premium Lounge and the Amex Centurion Lounge. The lounge had plenty of seating options and wasn't too crowded when I went around noon. I particularly liked the seats near the railing that overlooked the departure level. USB and power outlets were available at most of the seats. I think the best part of the lounge was the view of the apron traffic. In terms of food, the selection was pretty standard with different pastries and baked goods. One side of the buffet station had some fruits, salads, and a selection of ham and sandwiches. There's also a decent selection of alcoholic drinks and beverages. The best food choice, in my opinion, was this chicken curry with rice. Definitely give it a try if you happen to visit the United Club next time. Since there was still a couple of hours to go before boarding, I spent some time just walking around the concourse, spotting different airlines, and just enjoying the airport ambience. With three hours left, I decided to check out the Singapore Silver Chris Lounge located near gate 15 on the departure level. The lounge decor was nice, but it was much more crowded than United Club. In comparison, this lounge doesn't feel as spacious due to the lack of windows and an open ceiling. The lounge has several seating pods, which is a nice touch if you want to get some private space to lounge and do some work. The food was definitely where this lounge stood out. The soybean curd dessert and laksa was delicious, and I quickly devoured it without remembering to take a video of it first. Sorry, was a bit too hungry there. With 30 minutes before boarding, it was time to head back to the gate. The aircraft taking me back to Vancouver today is an old livery 777. Hope I get better luck next time catching a ride on the new livery. Boarding started right on time at 6 50 pm, almost a full hour before the scheduled departure time. Business class boarded from the front of the plane. Air Canada has seven rows of business class in a reverse herringbone layout. 
I'll be in 6A for this flight. Pre-departure drinks were offered once seated, and I opted for an orange juice. The menu was distributed shortly after, so let's take a look. For dinner, there are four different main course options. There is a second brunch service prior to arrival. Starting with the seat features, there is an adjustable armrest on the side. There is an intuitive control panel on the side table to control the seat position, lumbar support, and ambient lighting around the seat. There is also a rather large compartment in the side table which stores the IFE remote controller and the power outlet. Noise cancelling headphones were provided but I found them a little uncomfortable compared to my own pair of Bose headphones. Slippers were also provided which was a nice touch. Si vous avez besoin d'aide, ou si vous avez des préoccupations, adressez-vous.
Checking out the entertainment system, there's a wide selection of movies, music, and TV shows. The best part of it was the interactive map. A quick tour of the washroom. Everything was pretty simple with just a bottle of Vitruvi lotion available. Meal service began shortly after takeoff, starting with a hot towel, some nuts, and a beverage. To start, there was a salad of zucchini and pumpkin, and pork roulettes in a dried apricot chutney. For my main, I opted for the beef tenderloin with mashed potatoes and green beans on the side. And to wrap it up, I had a simple fruit platter and a cheese plate. Who am I kidding? Of course I had to get the New York cheesecake too. After the meal service, the cabin lights were dimmed to allow passengers to get some sleep. Unfortunately, the choppy turbulence kept me awake for a while. As I was getting ready for bed, I felt the air inflation system in my seat deflate. Thankfully, the flight attendants were able to help me reset my seat. The duvet was slightly on the warm side, but fortunately, there were individual air nozzles at each seat. Big thumbs up for that. Time to take a look at Air Canada's amenity kit, which is provided by a company called Want Les Essentiels. It includes socks, eye shades, earplugs, toothbrush, lip balm, and hand cream. After a few hours of sleep, I checked out the snacks available in the galley and got myself a bag of chips, chocolate, and granola bars, as well as a signature cocktail. Prior to arrival, brunch was served. I chose to have the Chinese option of assorted dumplings and dim sum. Oh, and a buttered croissant, of course. There were some picturesque views of the mountains as we approached Vancouver. It reminds me just how amazing the landscape is in British Columbia. Prior to the descent, the captain informed us of an issue with the deflated nose wheel. However, it wasn't a big deal as we could still land normally. It was my first time experiencing this kind of situation. Keep watching to see the full landing where the captain held the nose up for a very long time.
for local time is uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We ask you please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. Then your bag is stowed till the seatbelt sign has been turned off. Turned off. Smoking, of course, is not permitted. Now, good afternoon again from the flight deck, ladies and gentlemen. The captain speaking. Our maintenance personnel have looked at our nose wheel, and the one is, in fact, uh, has no pressure. Uh, they've determined the very best option at this point is to change both nose wheels to... Uh, After a 30-minute delay where we had our nose gear tires changed, we were on our way to the gate. Kudos to how quickly and professionally the situation was handled. Overall, I had a very pleasant flight with Air Canada across the Pacific. The reverse herringbone seat configuration is one of my favorite, and the additional mattress pad and slippers are always appreciated. One slight hiccup was the occasional seat deflation, but that can easily be reset with the help of the flight attendants. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching, happy travels, see you in the next one!